Hi everybody, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today we're going to be unboxing Star Wars X-Wings Heroes of the Resistance Expansion Pack. This is a brand new expansion pack for X-Wing that includes a new version of the Millennium Falcon and Poe's uh, slick paint job on his T-70 X-Wing. This box set retails for $40 um, US. Of course, online discounters probably get it for you a little bit cheaper. Not too much on the package, standard X-Wing fare. It does have a game contents here on the back telling us that we've got a rule sheet, 28 cards, 27 tokens, two maneuver dials, two plastic painted ships with base and pegs. So there you go. We're going to go ahead and open this, take a look at the contents. All right, so here we have the contents of the box. We've busted it open. It is now trash. Okay, so here um, we've got all the tokens, cards, and all that goodness, and then the, the models themselves. We'll take a look at the models at the end, uh, but just a, a sneak peek, they, they look pretty sweet. And then here you've got I find this packaging kind of silly. They make a very nice box, but it can still just slide out the bottom. So let's start with the rules. You've got a um, component list, new rules. So they have, since the Falcon's in here, for example, it's going to have the rules for the turret. Not necessarily new if you have a falcon from all the way back from wave two. A slam action. Does this mean the new version of the falcon can slam? Hmm, interesting. New upgrade cards. And then you have a mission. Mission 19, final mission. So this looks pretty cool. It uses both the falcon and uh, the X-Wing. And then a look at the maneuver dial and credits on the back. So here you have the, the YT and the X-Wing. Nothing shocking or, or new there. All right, so that's the uh, rule book. We have a plastic bag with the stands, small one, big one. We have the center pegs to hold the maneuver dials together, two of those, always good to have those. Then in here we have all the, the goodies. We'll go ahead and take a look at these um, in turn. Now, I did see the preview a long time ago when they initially announced this pack, but didn't look at it too closely. Haven't looked at the um, um, online forums about this or reviews. I didn't want to kind of muddy my own thoughts on, on what I'm seeing here. But um, let's see if I can get zoomed in a little bit here. So here we just have the, the placards, the cards for the, the flight bases. Um, you have the Falcon and the X-Wing. You have another Falcon maneuver dial. Tokens. I got some tokens. I'm assuming these are for the custom scenario. And the maneuver dials for the T-70 and the... Uh, YT-1300, Millennium Falcon. So don't accidentally get those two mixed up. Okay. Then we've got the cards. We'll tackle these cards. We'll go with the pilot cards first. All right. We have two piles of uh, pilot cards here, Falcon and X-Wing. We're going to go ahead and look at the Falcon first and see what we get. The first card is... Han Solo, let's get that in focus, shall we? Um, the Falcon stats, three attack, one agility, eight hull, five shield, is the same. Um, when you are placed during setup, you can be placed anywhere in the play area beyond range three of an enemy ship. So that's a completely new rule for uh, Han Solo. So this lets him basically infiltrate on the board. Very interesting. 46 points for Han though. 
and he's got a uh, elite pilot talent, concussion missile, and two crew. Nothing, nothing new there. So that's Han Solo at pilot skill nine for forty-six points. Next up, we have Ray. My daughter's going to be very happy about this, and uh, she's pilot skill eight, so she's up there with Luke for forty-five points when attacking or defending. If the enemy ship is inside your firing arc, you may reroll up to two of your blank results. So she is good offense or defense. Then we have Chewbacca for 42 points. After another friendly ship at range 1 to 3 is destroyed, but has not fired, uh, fled the battlefield, you may perform an attack. And then we have Resistance Sympathizer, pilot skill three. After the destruction of the Hosean system, some spacers willingly aided the resistance against the malevolent First Order. So he's just your generic Resistance Sympathizer at 38 points. The only difference stat-wise for this guy is he um, doesn't have an elite pilot talent, but his firepower stays at three, unlike, um, what is it, the uh, Outer Rim Smuggler version of the YT. Uh, 1300 has, a, I think, a attack value of two. So that's, that's pretty interesting. So there you go, you get four pilots, and all of them are new, so it's not uh, Han and Chewie aren't reprints, um, I don't think. So they've got some cool... Han Solo's new ability is very, very intriguing. I think that's the first time you can place anywhere in the play area beyond range three of enemy ships. Very cool. And Rey looks like she'll be sufficiently tanky. So that's the Falcon cards. So next up we have the T-70 X-Wing. All right, uh, so here we go. This is another version of Poe Dameron. He's pilot skill nine in this version compared to pilot skill eight in the uh, the Force Awakens X-Wing starter box set. Uh, while attacking or defending, if you have a focus token, you may change one of your focus results to a hit or an evade. I think that's the same as the um, pilot skill eight guy, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments for 33 points. You have the very nice and formidable stats of an X-Wing T-70. Uh, firepower three, two agility, three hull, three shields. He's got an elite pilot talent, a torpedo slot, R2 slot, and a tech upgrade slot. So uh, very cool. Now, I imagine they did this because when they did the starter set and created the starter set, they gave him pilot skill eight, you know, worse than Han, Darth Vader, and um, Wedge. And then the movie came out and um, they realized just what an incredibly awesome pilot Poe is, and they have uh, bumped him up to a more believable pilot skill nine all right so then we have uh, nine nub he's out of the uh, co-pilot seat of the millennium falcon and flying a t-70 x-wing when you receive a stress token if there is an enemy ship inside your firing arc at range one you may discard that stress token so as long as he is up close and in someone's face he um, can get rid of stress. He has a way to, to deal with stress. For 29 points, pilot skill 9. Um, interesting pilot skill. Snap Wexley at pilot skill 6 and 28 points. Uh, after you execute 2, 3, or 4 speed maneuver, if you are not touching a ship, you may perform a free boost action. So very cool. So another way to... to uh, Maximize your action economy, if you will. You can get a free boost out of this guy. Jess Pava. And I don't know if that's a, a character from the movie. I, I recognize Nine and Snap Wexley. Jess Pava. Um, or she might be the female pilot. Uh, pilot skill 3, 25 points. When attacking or defending, you may reroll one of your dice for each other friendly ship at range one. So interesting. And then we've got a uh, red squadron veteran pilot skill four gives us an elite pilot talent at pilot, at pilot skill four and 26 points. 
And then you have a blue squadron novice for 24 points, pilot skill two. I think that's the same dude out of the starter set. So for the X-Wing, it comes with six cards, um, six different pilots, all the way from nine to two, including the awesome new Poe Dameron card. I know Poe has kind of been a mainstay in tournament lists since the Force Awakens came out last year. Um, so I wonder if this is going to supplant him or if the pilot skill eight is, um, is better. All right, next up, we're going to look at the uh, cards, the upgrade cards and everything that comes with that. Okay, we've got um, the cards we're going to take a look at. Uh, snapshot. This looks like um, uh, two attack range one. After an enemy ship executes a maneuver, you may perform this attack against that ship. Attack one ship. You cannot modify your attack dice and cannot attack again this phase. Uh, so interesting. So this will let you shoot in the movement step, basically. Very cool. And you don't discard this, from what I can tell. Interesting snapshot. All right. Another snapshot. If snapshot doesn't cover, to, cover it for you, you've got a trick shot for zero points when attacking. If the attack is obstructed, you may roll an additional attack die. Oh. So now you're just showing off with your, your shooting skills here. You get two trick shots. Uh, Finn, which is a unique rebel only card. Uh, when attacking with a primary weapon or defending, if the enemy ship is inside your firing arc, you may add one blank result to your roll. Interesting. So not sure what kind of combo you would need to take advantage of ink adding a blank result to your roll, but something that gives you a, a re-roll or something like that. Hotshot Copilot. When attacking with a primary weapon, the defender may spend must spend one focus token if able. When defending, the attacker must spend uh, one focus token if able. So this is forcing um, the defender or if you're being attacked, whoever's attacking you, to spend a focus. Even if they roll really well, they're going to burn their focus attacking you. Ray. <clears throat> Rebel only, two points. At the start of the end phase, you may place one of your ship's focus tokens on this card. At the start of the combat phase, you may assign one of those tokens to your ship. So it looks like she can start banking uh, tokens at the beginning of the game. That's interesting. M9G8. Is this a new um, droid? He's unique. When a ship you have, uh, you have locked is attacking, you may choose one attack die. The attacker must reroll that die. You can acquire target locks on other friendly ships. Hmm. So you could lock on to a friendly ship that's going to shoot someone and then make that friendly ship re-roll one attack die if they missed. Interesting. All right, so this is why the slam instructions were um, in the new booklet. Burnout slam, large ship only. Your action bar gains the slam action icon. After you perform a slam action, discard this card. It's a... Um, uh, illicit upgrade. Interesting. That well, looks like you get two of these. Primed thrusters, small ship only. Stress tokens do not prevent you from performing boost or barrel roll actions unless you have three or more stress tokens. Interesting. So this is another tech upgrade. I know there haven't been too many tech upgrade cards, so it's good to see they're adding some more. Pattern Analyzer, another tech upgrade. When executing a maneuver, you may resolve the check pilot stress step after the perform action step instead of before that step. So that's pretty cool. So you're still going to be stressed, but you might be able to get off a combo or something beforehand. So we've got two of those. We can analyze two patterns. Millennium Falcon title card. Uh, after you execute a three-speed bank maneuver, if you are not touching another ship, 
uh, and you are not stressed, you may receive one stress token to rotate your ship 180 degrees. Hmm. So it's another way to perform a, a flip without necessarily giving them flip. Then we have black one. T70 X-Wing only title card. After you perform a boost or barrel roll action, you may remove one enemy target lock from a friendly ship at range one. You cannot equip this card if your pilot skill is six or lower. So we're looking at you, Poe. And let's clear these out of the way. Integrated Astromech, a card we saw in the T-70 expansion. Um, very cool card. Uh, we get a couple more of those, that's nice. I like running these on regular X-Wings as well. Basically it's giving you, uh, letting you jettison your R2 unit as a, a blade of wound or, or hull. So you get two of those cards. And then Smuggling Compartment. YT-1300 and YT-2400 only, modification limited. Your upgrade bar gains the illicit upgrade icon. You may equip one additional modification upgrade that costs three or fewer squad points. Now, I think this is the first time that the Rebels are going to have access to illicit upgrades. So that is very interesting, a very interesting mechanic. Uh, because, as far as I know, the Empire still can't get um, illicit upgrades. So there you go. There are the cards for the expansion. Some really cool stuff. Um, looking forward to trying them out. All right, next up, let's look at the ships. The ships are free of the plastic, so we can take a little bit closer look at them. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with uh, Poe's T-70 X-Wing. Uh, the painting is, you know... These guys have painting down. The ships look awesome. I'm not actually sold on the color scheme, but that's not the game's fault. That's what was in The Force Awakens. The black and orange, well, when I'm filming this, it's two days before Halloween, so it's very fitting that we have a Halloween pumpkin X-Wing, but i um, not, not a big fan of the, the coloration. I like the, the classic white with the blue stripes. Those ones look awesome. But it's cool to have him. It's definitely a cool way to denote Poe in your army and just uh, add some variety to the, the squadron. And the, the painting is top-notch. I mean, it looks it looks great. So there you go. That is the Poe Black 1 T-70 X-Wing from The Force Awakens. Okay, then we have um, the Falcon. So... Cosmetically, there is, we know this is the Force Awakens because the uh, radar dish is rectangular instead of a circle. As any Star Wars fan knows that Lando knocked off the original radar dish in the Death Star 2. So, there you go. The other thing we want to do, I wanted to show you, was just to compare this to the original Falcon from Wave 2. Um... So I, I have one of these. Now, I haven't um, touched this one up beyond painting the, um, or highlighting the engines a little bit. But just to give you an idea between the two, um, the original one is darker. Okay, mold-wise, there are some updates. Um, I don't know if you guys can see the details the greebles that are in these panels are different. You can see there versus the same spot there. So there are some subtle changes to this model. We also have greebles here versus greebles there, just a lot more of them. The antenna obviously is a big difference. The coloring is a little bit cleaner on um, this one, which is funny because it was sitting in a junkyard in Jakku and under a tarp. I guess the tarp kept it looking good. So, there you go underneath. We'll take it off just to take a quick look. Alright, so here we have a comparison of the underside, the new ones here. Um, battle damage has been a little fleshed out. That battle damage is just a 
gouge almost. And here you can actually see little uh, doodads in there. So even parts of the ship that uh, you don't normally see, they went to the trouble of, of dressing up and making it look good. Landing gear looks different too. Landing gear on the original, landing gear on the new. Cool. All right, so there you go. That is the new Heroes of the Resistance expansion pack for Star Wars X-Wing, uh, bringing some new options and choices to the Rebels, letting them use the illicit upgrade from Scum and Villainy faction. Um, should be interesting times. I'm looking forward to playing these. Uh, sorry I haven't had any X-Wing battle reports on the channel recently. Um, my normal X-Wing opponent has been out of the state, and uh, he should be back, and we're going to get some games in. We're going to also have some other community folks come in and, and play a game or two as well. But there you go, folks. That is Star Wars X-Wing Heroes of the Resistance. If you like what you saw, please go ahead, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below about what you think about this expansion pack. Thanks, and keep on wargaming.